the heart and soul behind every business. Stories. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, hosted by me, Joshua Lori. From setbacks to comebacks, from tragedies to triumphs, we inspire entrepreneurs through conversations that matter. Witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. Whether it's your career, business, or life, your success is always one story away. This is Business Story of the Week. And welcome back, folks. Welcome back to Business Story of the Week. I am your host, Joshua. And today, the question is, can thinking about the future actually change your life today? It's quite an interesting question because they say you have to live in the now. They say you have to live, you know, you don't have to live in the past. Don't think ahead too much. But our guest today offers, begs to differ, so to speak. He's a perfect guest to answer that question today. Tom Myers is a Belgian osteopath and body-centered stress coach. Very interesting. Renowned for his pioneering work in treating stress-related dysautonomia. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> <laughs> With the re 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 a seat. Ah, this one I'm not sure. You have reset. Have... Reset. Very good. Reset, okay, but it's spelled differently, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, R E A S E T. We're going to talk about that today. He treats stress related dysautonomia with the reset approach. His journey from struggling entrepreneur to therapist, author, speaker, and thought leader in personal futures and manual therapy highlights the transformative power of futures thinking in personal development. I am very excited for the topic today, and I'd love to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome our guest for today, Tom Myers. Thank you for coming to the show. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. What a wonderful introduction. When I'm listening to all the things that you're saying that I'm doing, I think for most people must think from how can you relate all of that together? And I think we are trying, Joshua, uh, in in the time we have together to make sense of all the connections between these different elements or let's mm -hmm. say these different hats that mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. uh, because for me all of it makes one thing mm -hmm. you know and that is my curiosity and you know my heart's desire mm -hmm. to make this world a better place to Wonderful. help people to flourish and thrive yeah. in this fast changing world well that is beautiful i mean we are trying to connect a lot of dots today especially you know in the world in the future in the society that we live in in our lives today we're trying to connect your wisdom your insight and helping us bridge that gap between the present and the future because you have this approach in your concept, in your new book, Futurizing Yourself. But Tom, before we really get into this, I like starting to show off like this. Your journey from struggling entrepreneur, renowned therapist, again, many, many hats. It's quite inspiring. Can you share any pivotal moments in your life, any experiences that led you to say that, wow, okay, this is where I'm going to focus in, and this is the topic I'm going to do, Again, there's a lot of pivotal moments, experiences in your life. Talk to us about that. Give us a walkthrough. What is the story of Tom Myers? Okay. Um, let's start when I was 12. I, uh, you know, I was a late bloomer, so I didn't know better. And uh, I always had said, apparently, I wanted to be a chef. So I went to mm -hmm. catering school at 12, ended it at okay. 19. Mm -hmm. um, discovered that I didn't really like being a chef. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, it, it's it's not the cooking side, but you know, you're isolated with these few people, yes. and I'm in, I'm quite a social person, so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I didn't like the the experience, so I went into the other side. I went as a I went to work as a waiter, right. and ended up working in England in some luxury hotels, or ended up also on a cruise ship, the QE2, mm -hmm. where I was a waiter, a sommelier, you know, traveling around the world from you know, with the ship and also backpacking. So right. it was like right. a year from 20 to 28, 29. And then I came back to Belgium. So I've, after okay. eight years of spending abroad, I came back and uh -huh. didn't really know what to do when a friend of mine called and said, from Tom, you know, 
uh, wouldn't you be interested in opening your own gourmet deli? And I did. I thought it was the best thing that you know the universe said. From here you go, your future. Mm-hmm. You know this is you know this is destined for you. Mm-hmm. And I, I took it on straight away, not really thinking if this was what I wanted or I had as right. a dream. It was right. his dream to expand, and what he he had, I wanted. Oh, right. He had the. He was successful. Okay. He had a BMW. He had a BMW motorbike. He had a beautiful house, beautiful wife, a kid, and I had nothing. I had okay. lots of experience, mm-hmm. but nothing else. So you know. So his dream became my dream, and I opened my shop on nine nine ninety nine with his help, mm-hmm. like a franchise, and two months later I was uh, suicidal depressive. Oh my goodness. And it's like a shock. One, it didn't work. Hey, oh. I did not have immediately the success as he had. I never even had thought about it would right. take time. Right. Hey, so start to think about present thinking. I was thinking from in the present, I will have what he had. Yes. I was not thinking long term. Yes. Hey, and yes. so that was an issue second mm-hmm. issue was i really was not in my place i was used to travel around right. the world and suddenly i was stuck between four walls so i felt wow. imprisoned wow. and that is really the defining moment that life could have gone in two ways mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right and it went into the way of of life Right, and wow. that is because of the neighbor, the the, the pharmacist Anna Marie. She came in one day, mm-hmm. and she said, "Tom, you need help." It was the only person. I was twenty nine. It was the only person I've ever talked about my problems. My parents did not know. My friends did not know. She was the only one. And she came in with a number and a name. She said, "From this person will help you. You need help," and I, and I really rejected it at the first. Wow. Uh, you know, I had seen my mother going to psychologist, psychiatrist. She was taken up for months at the time when I was younger. And I, and I could see that it didn't help her. So mm-hmm. if it didn't help her, why should I go? And I didn't consider myself sick. Mm-hmm. Okay. She was oh, sick. My. I wasn't. I was oh, suicidal okay. depressed, but I was not sick. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, okay. it's like, you know, that, that the mind works in strange ways. Yes, right? of course. Of and course. so anyway. I went to that, you know, a month later, I was sitting at a big desk with a very intimidating woman looking at me uh, Mm -hmm. because I had made the phone call. Right. I had booked that uh, appointment. And this very intimidating woman said to me, Mm -hmm. what are you doing here? (laughs) And it was like, don't you know, you know, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. And that's where... I felt suddenly something came up in me. And again, Mm -hmm. we will talk about this later. It's again like, why did I read in the weeks before a book about personality and individuality? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just happened, right? And in that moment, I thought, hey, you know, what I feel is that my personality is going in one way and my individuality is going in another way. It's like this conflictual experience so i explained to her what i'm feeling inside is this conflict between these two and what i want is harmony okay she said and like you're doing tell me your story so i told her and she so she gave me a new perspective by Mm -hmm. asking me questions never Mm -hmm. giving me answers Mm -hmm. she helped me to create a new perspective on my um you know, on my experiences, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I was good for nothing. And she, you know, she made me see that I could become good at something. She gave me homework, three questions that are in my book, Futurize Yourself, Uh to help me to find my potential, what was actually within me. Wow, wow. And, and, And through the questions, so this, again, she gave me these, I had to answer them, created little stories about them. Then they were discussed. And turns out that there was a therapist, a communicator, teacher, researcher, and traveler in me. Somebody who needed uh, movement. What was I doing selling charcuterie and cheese? <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> I don't want to go into the details because it takes to, us too far away because I can mm -hmm. talk hours about of just course. this topic alone. Of <clears throat> and so, and, and that's when she started to analyze from, you know, this is who you are and so forth. And then the third question after that, of the last question, it's not the third, the last question gave me, now imagine your life or an ideal day in 10 years time. Right. So I went home after the second session with that question, imagine your day, an ideal day in 10 years time. Mm -hmm. And you're suicidal depressive, your shop is not working very well. Thinking about the future is the last thing you think you need. Yes. But I was scared of her. Yeah, she was oh. intimidating. I was scared of her. I was, okay. you know, I felt like a little child mm -hmm. with this kind of this, uh, you know, uh, strong will professor who was, you know, if you don't do your job, I will, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I will slap you verbally. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so I created this another story and said, right. okay, if this is my potential, what can it become? Right, right, right. So I wrote down a story and from that story, the essence is I wrote in 10 years time, I wake up and I'm a therapist who has developed his own approach, wow. who has written a book about it and is asked wow. around the world to give presentations and workshops. This wow. was 24 years ago. Wow. And all of that I am today. Wow. Wow, Tom, what a story. So uh, it's it's quite true that you could probably talk the entire hour just about that story alone. <laughs> and there's a lot to unravel there, first of all. But first off, I'd like to acknowledge and give a shout out to your therapist. She intimidated you into your future, <laughs> into your dreams, into achieving a dream, a life yes. that you dreamt of. So shout out to her, but also, again, acknowledging, of course, your perseverance and your bravery to to just go through that, to, to go through that type of struggle. But this now leads us to that question, uh, Tom, which I, I, I am now far more interested. Uh, before your book that you have now, which is called Futurize Yourself, you also have The Future's Effect. And it focuses on designing life with intention, which, um, which I feel is what you did with that story, right? You wrote it down, you wanted, it kind of like, we call it, in a different term of vision writing. You kind of wrote what your vision was going to be in 10 years yes. down the line, 20 years down the line. And now you have lived that. You are living the future that you have visualized. Talk to us about future thinking and kind of segue us about this Futurize Yourself book of yours because the question really now is how can adopting a future's mindset help individuals navigate the complexities and uncertainties of not just today's world, but our own lives, especially when going something as, you know, as dark and as deep as the depression that you went through. Why is future thinking so important? Yeah, I just want to point something out. So Futurize Yourself is my first book. And the future's oh. effect is my second book. Oh, okay. Right. I flipped that okay. around. Okay, yeah, there you go. Around. So the futurize yourself, design your life on purpose is my mm -hmm. backstory. My, so it's like also with the questions to find your potential, right? Interesting. Okay, okay. And so um, the second book, the future's effect, you, um, change your story, change your uh, future. You that okay. is the one where we go deeper into that aspect. Lovely, of, lovely. on okay, what do you beautiful. on what do you design your future eh, on that right. potential yeah. on that what dna does not alter right. anyway the the future you have to see not as a destination mm -hmm. but as an ongoing reality wow first wow. of all mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna give you an example it's why do you brush your teeth because it needs to be clean every day. I don't want to get cavities. I want to be able to grow old and keep all my teeth. Okay, so the last part you said, this is the main objective of cleaning your teeth originally. The right. long-term perspective of keeping, you know, of having good teeth in the future. Right? Ah, of course, of course. What you, what you get from that 
in the present mm-hmm. is clean teeth, clean teeth. fresh yeah. breath, so fresh you breath. can kiss your partner. Absolutely. Eh? Midterm. If you don't clean your teeth, mm-hmm. bacteria in your mouth increase, and these can have cardiovascular, pulmonary, Whoa. and infectious problems, mm-hmm. diseases. Mm-hmm. So okay. here you are every day mm-hmm. using the future mm-hmm. to have a better present. Right. And also with short and long term benefits. Wow. Wow. Okay. What an interesting so, way to put so, it. So so I'm give this example because it's the best way to explain yes. how a future vision mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. What do you want Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can change your behavior to enjoy the present more and have benefits also in medium and long term. Because every choice and decision action you make creates the future. Yes, yes, yes. So on what are you basing your choices, your decisions and actions? Mm -hmm matters wow very if you don't know where you're going uh-huh. how do you know you make the right choice decision or action there you go there you go that's very simple that's very important very simple that's true that's true tom thank you so much for putting that together because um it's not just about future thinking i love that because people are thinking like you just need to be pragmatic but it's all it's not really pragmatism Right. Because it's just like expecting, you know, like expecting what's in the future, but knowing where you're going, having that North Star, having that guiding star in your life that this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to be sets the tone for everything else. It sets the tone for your midterm actions and your immediate actions now, which is the short term. I love that, Tom. I love the concept that you shared that that now. And it, it really makes sense when it comes to. Um, how you approach life. But talk to us a little bit how, why this methodology applies to therapy. How come futures thinking also applies to suicidal depression or, you know, you in yeah. your background as well, right? Like you are you yeah. as a therapist and applying it in the field of manual therapy. How did futurizing yourself or thinking of the future um, c- contribute to therapy. Yeah. So before 29, I was very much living in a way that life came to me. Right. So, and right. so things right. happened and I reacted upon that. Yeah, My friend gave me an idea mm-hmm. and I reacted upon that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, but imagine yes. doing that in business all the time. You will oh. be running out of business very quickly, right? Very quick, very quick. What does businesses do? Mm-hmm. They have, you know, they have a DNA. Mm-hmm. You know, they have their DNA, their their values and things like that, and their product. And then they're going to they think about future scenarios, and then and they're going to align their decisions and choices via and to make these. Uh, this uh, in real ed to realize their objectives and then are hopefully also uh, flexible enough if something changes to adapt, right? So first of all, if you create your vision of the future, Mm -hmm. you have to know that what does not alter with you, your DNA. Okay. So for, so what do you want to feel? What are your aspirations and what is your potential? This is the DNA structure yes, eh? because yes. through, through experience, you know, to expressing your potential that what you're born with, mm-hmm. you probably are closer to feeling what you want to feel or can create an environment and a job and, an, and actions that are more closely to, you know, what you sense you're good at and your aspirations also, right? From what you want from life. Do you want to have a good life? Do you want to evolve as a person? Do you want to have, you know, transcendent meaning, purpose, and for the next generations, are these part of your of your aspirations? So what 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 was I doing before? I was not in my potential. 
I did not know what I wanted yes. and I, I did not have a, you know, or, or when I looked at the future, say, I, I'm not going to have a good life. I'm not going to evolve as a person. I'm actually, you know, um, somewhere de-evolving. You know, de I felt I was yes. going down rather than up. Yes. Yes. So, so the idea is how does that help psychological problems or, yes. you know, is also by we need to start, we need to stop and say from, okay, what is it that makes me me? Wow. Am I in my element? Am I doing the job, you know, that comes natural to me that in yes. which I want to evolve, even if, you know, technology is changing, yes, if course. you're in your potential, Yes, and you you know you don't mind that so much because you're going to use this technology mm -hmm. to evolve into you know in, into your potential. Yes, right. Yes, yes, so yes. you need to change it. You know, things are changing very rapidly now. Many very people rapidly. are fee, uh, fear uh, fear um, their jobs, but if you're in your potential, you don't mind this technology because it just will elevate you to the next level of your potential by using that. Yes, of course. I love and that. This is, and this is how futures thinking uh -huh. based on your DNA, on your potential, uh -huh. which uh -huh. is described in the futures effect, uh -huh. this is how you somewhere are pulled forward I by see. the future instead yes. of being pushed by your past. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, I love that. Okay, so, so first of all, knowing where you are, knowing who you are, knowing what ticks you, knowing what you're good at, it actually forms. It will form what you want in the future. It naturally, right? If you don't know that, then you know what you don't know what kind of future that you're moving, moving forward. But having knowing that actually allows you to accelerate forward into whatever future that you are doing. It pushes you forward. I love that. I love that you are. Uh, you, the way you put that together. Um, I, I want to ask about this approach that you were talking about in the book um, and if it relates to what you're saying on how it helps when it comes to manual therapy, how it helps to push us move forward into our future. And you call this, I mispronounced it earlier, reset approach. Reset no. approach. That's but, it. There you go. Reset approach. But spelled R E A. S E T. Could you explain to us what the reset approach is and how it helps in treating stress related? Let, let me try to pronounce this really <laughs> this probably. Autonomia. Okay, you didn't tell me that. This autonomia. There you go. Nailed it. I nailed it. <laughs> there you go. But but I, I feel like it it, it, it it relates to what we just talked about, what you just explained to us. The reset approach and how it helps stress related dysautonomia. Uh, what is what is this autonomia first of all and how does reset approach help us in managing that okay um, this autonomia is another way of saying stress yep right basically stress mm -hmm. stress being provoked in the body through mm -hmm. a dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system yes or partly mm -hmm. and there is an, there is another system uh, but you know, it takes us a it's all part of a general adaptation uh, process in our body. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. autonomic, the autonomic nervous system has this sympathetic and parasympathetic part. Yes. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. And the purists will also say there is a third part, but okay, let's keep it simple. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when you're, when the demands come up to you, okay, you need to react. And so your sympathetic goes up yeah. and your mm -hmm. parasympathetic reduces. Mm -hmm. So sympathetic is where your muscles stands up, your heart rate goes up, your your uh, heart, your breath rate goes up, your digestion go down, and over right. time also your immunity. You're right, of course. Okay. okay. So, so there is also vascular changes in the body and in the brain, mm -hmm. right? In the brain, mm -hmm. that means certain parts of your brain are less vascularized to mm -hmm. redirect uh, nutritional distribution. Right. So the nutrition, the glucose, the oxygens, they go to more to central parts of your brain, your survival mode. Yes, of course, of course. 
that gets more and also your amygdala fear mode so that reactive mode is yes, yes. up and, but yes. your reflective mode your time perception your way of thinking is going down oh, so okay. this is the stress response so yes. this is stress response the general adaptation response and also adds adrenaline cortisol and so forth right okay so that needs to be built after the stress is over you, and your parasympathetic system needs to take over and to, mm -hmm. that's the relaxation recuperation regeneration mode right mm -hmm. okay so okay. there <clears throat> the muscles relax the heart rate goes down again the mm -hmm. breath rate goes down the digestion goes back to normal and mm -hmm. improves and your immunity improves and your brain is again vascularized completely and you can think again Right. This is okay. e excellent for you're in the middle of the road, there's a car coming your way. This is not the moment where you start to think yes. about what am I going to eat next? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do this evening? Mm -hmm. So you need to jump. But you see what okay. happens. You jump, mm -hmm. okay? And then, so you have not thought about the color of the car or your me next meal. No. So mm -hmm. this is what happens also when you get these emails and when you have work overload. The same system yes, of course, of is being course. activated. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. this is for most people today, the, mm -hmm. you know, the state, the, the, the stress state is more dominant uh, and by some people fixed. So that parasympathetic gets less and less uh, right. activation. Right. And you okay. could see it, you could see it a little bit like the world is changing. There is a lot of the mountainous. Uh, and we are reacting in the same way, of course, in, in, in a you know in a prehistoric way because evolutionary, yes, ninety nine percent of human history mm -hmm. we lived in small groups and and in the savanna, mm -hmm. and only very recently, so in one percent of our human history historical time, we everything you see today has been created, and but yes, our body has not had the time to create adaptive processes for that. So our, our stress response is being activated chronically. Chronically. And, uh, chronically, mm -hmm. but that relaxation, recuperation, regeneration, not. Not at all. Okay, I'm going to give you another reference to this. Please. Think about the ecological footprint. The ecological footprint is increasing. So mm -hmm. we are using too many resources from the earth than that the mm -hmm. earth can resource in a year. Yes. Yes. creates and the uh, 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 world overshoot day which is somewhere in July this year and so where right. we've used all the resources the earth can replenish mm -hmm. well the same is happening with us Joshua wow. Wow. and it's called I've named it so I'm a I'm a creator of new terminologies and words and I call it the biological footprint wow. the demands on us are higher than that our body eh, mm -hmm. or the demands on our resources is higher than what our body can resource. Okay, now the reset is a word R is T. So return to ease. Oh, okay. And ease is the modus operandus, and so the intellectual operating system between stress and relaxation. Wow. It's the modus in where we are adaptive right. and can manage change, which means health. Health is mm -hmm. your capacity to adapt and manage change. Yes, okay. okay. So that's where that reset, the reset combined with ease makes yes. reset. Yes, precisely. I love that. That is very mind blowing. That is why it is spelled R E A S E T, S -E -T. because we are easing into this. It's, it's almost like a command. It's almost like a call to action in where we're like, whoop, wait, calm down. We need to just ease into this so we can manage it better. First of all, I truly agree with what you said just now, Dr. Tom, uh, uh, Tom, in that um, we are experiencing unprecedented amount of stimulation that I think is triggering our stress response chronically. It's just constant and never ending. And it's just we never evolved to 
how to manage it. We never evolved to a point to oh. learn how to physiologically, biologically, mm -hmm. mentally manage the constant stress and constant change is a key word that you are telling us that you have yes. showed us today because so many things are changing. And again, like our ecological footprint is just isn't there. I believe, and now that you've shown us actually, that this is these are the steps that we're starting to learn that now. You're presenting that to us today and how to ease into these changes. I am very interested, Tom. Have you experienced, tell to us a story, anything that stands out in your entire experience where this approach has helped? And if I were an individual, I would try to teach this to someone, what would be a single, if there's one actionable step that you could tell our audience and listeners today on the reset approach, what can I do every day to manage the change in the chronic stress that I'm experiencing on a daily basis? Okay. Very important to know is mm -hmm. that if the body is in a st stress state, fixed, yeah. mm -hmm. unfortunately, the only thing you can do is get help. Wow. Okay. Of course. Okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. Understand if your body is not able mm -hmm. to reset itself. So that means that you have lost your adaptivity adaptability wow so from a biological perspective mm -hmm. you need help wow wow because it's like people who have i'm not 100 percent into the mindfulness uh approach okay. there are good sides of it but there are some limitations and some misconceptions about it mm -hmm. but it's like meditation or relaxation exercises some people get anxiety by doing them right okay so these are the people in which the stress response is in a fixed state that means that your body that their body mm -hmm. is thinking that their survival is at stake that the right. saber-toothed tiger is running after them and that they need to run away Mm -hmm. So imagine that when you sit down and you want to do some meditation under a Bodhi tree and okay. your body says from get out of there. There is a okay. saber tooth tiger mm -hmm. running after you. Mm -hmm. You need to get out of here. Mm -hmm. So your anxiety rises and then you say meditation doesn't work for me. Yes. Right. Okay. So, wow. So one has to be, you know, very careful in that also when I say from do this, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful with my words. I don't like from do this one, two, three, okay? mm -hmm. but what is the state of the body mm -hmm. is very important on what information you give. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. And this wow. is where my work as an osteopath comes in. There you right? Go. Body center stress coaching is getting the people out of that state mm -hmm. manually. There is no pill, there is no electronic stimulator that can do that. They try to sell you that, but it does not work. Yes, yes. And the, yes. Fa the fact is that when your child is in distress, do you give it a pill? Do you put some electrode onto the neck and have some stimulation? Of course not. Mm -hmm. You you give it a hug and you rub the head. Mm. You have this hug which is not tight, mm -hmm. it's not too loose, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it is in a zone mm -hmm. of creating safety, comfort, care. Wow, wow, compassion. And that is compassionate. And then you rub the head, mm -hmm. right? And all of this is important because the body, so that let's say the reptilian brain, that survival response mm -hmm. must get a feeling of it's not in danger. Wow. Wow. So once you get that, you know, you can stimulate that through touch, through social touch, mm -hmm. but somebody you trust. So, so the body calms mm -hmm. and then, you know, the, the, 
let's say that the autonomic nervous system starts to lower its sympathetic and you know and be able to increase its parasympathetic that is that is what needs to be created right, right, right and right. there are certain points and a certain way of working as a therapist you can increase that effect the hug sure. effect also think about when you forget a name in your in a conversation you rub oh what was that name again yes, 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 yes. yes? Huh? okay one point one very important secondly when you've done something you shouldn't have done oh i shouldn't have done that you rub here and when you have tension stress you, oh yes on the head Temple. so so these are instincts but when you what so i went looking i had these points and then I saw, but these are reflex points. So why are they important? I started to notice the neuroanatomical links to the reset approach, to resetting the body. Wow. Wow. So you can say from, I'm going to breathe in and out and do this. Eh? Okay. Like this. Okay. Or you can do like. <sighs> okay. And it's okay. not massage, it's a light, light touch. Remember, you have a child in your arms, you don't press, you don't massage, it's necessarily, and it's a sort of, there is a touch of comfort that is that you give yourself. Um, so, and, and this is what I've been distilling that also people to maintain their ease mode. Wow. After the reset. Mm -hmm body full body treatment mm -hmm. that how they can maintain mm -hmm. their you know that balancing effect to do this on a regular basis during the day mm -hmm. and each time about one minute wow wow tom first of all you may have actually just saved hundreds of lives today on this episode right now including mine tom i have struggled previously with a nervous breakdown and it was because I could not handle everything that I was going through the grief that I was experiencing you know the mistakes that I have made on that day and it just all piled in and I had a nervous breakdown if I knew this then where I could just simply stop and give myself compassion give myself self love give myself that care that we would look from others I love that it's very you know it's so easy to be like a self-help guru and be like, you know, self-love, self-care, you know, and all that. But there really isn't any actionable steps. And what you did just now to us, you taught us real actionable steps into the reset approach and easing ourselves into that uh, state. So once again, on the head, back of the palm, yeah. breathe one minute a day and maybe also on your temple, close your eyes. Yeah. Deep breath, one minute a day is all you are ever going to need. I love that, Tom. The reset. If you're not in the state of stress fixed. Yes, right? of course. This is because then you need help, right? Yes, of so course. So this is a very important very distinction important that we detail. need to, to, uh, to make. Mm -hmm. But look at it. Uh, uh, my inspiration is Professor Robert Sapolsky. Right. He has written several books. One is Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. The second one is Behave. Mm -hmm. And now, since last year, Determined. Right? Right. And these books is where I find the scientific evidence mm -hmm. of my work. Wow. Right? So I'm experiencing, I'm a practitioner. I'm a practitioner who thinks and sees from something is happening. Why? My patients give me feedback and I, I can't place it. So I'm going to look for why are they telling me that they can think better after a physical treatment? How is that possible? I'm giving you an osteopathic treatment. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, they say from Tom, the day after, I could think better. I could make better decisions. I had the same amount of stress, but I didn't care as much anymore. It's like wow. it was no problem anymore. I have more time. How can you create more time, more time after exactly. a physical treatment? Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. this is where I started in 2007 with my patients saying to me, you know, mm -hmm. we come for this physical pain. It's straight away better. So one session. But can I tell you something about the other experiences? Can you tell me Please. how that works? 
because mm -hmm. I haven't had this with another osteopath. This is yeah. how the reset approach became to be because uh, I was my patients were telling me something and I had no idea what I was doing differently, wow. nor what was the problem. Wow. And the, the one person, the one professor, the books of Robert Sapolsky have made a huge difference. Wow. And in his latest book, Determined, I've been able to digest the idea and which comes back to what I want to say mm -hmm. here is that even though that, you know, we are the sum of our biology, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That even what we think and do and say is, you know, somewhere it's neurological connections that have just before I said it already created the idea and so forth. But mm -hmm. the, the biology can also change our behavior to change our mind that can change our environment and change how our biology reacts. Beautiful. This is the circle, right? Mm -hmm. So by, by changing our behavior, we can change our, you know, the way we, you know, we, the mindset is not only our choices, our decisions and our actions, mm -hmm. but also the way we look at the world, mm -hmm. the way we're going to look at our situation and we can, mm -hmm. so, and by changing that, so changing the environment mm -hmm. or, you know, because of our way of thinking, we yes. can change the new way, how our body is stimulated. And that's where we're going to break this stress cycle. I'm going to give wow. this in another example. Please. Think about digestion, okay. right? Do you control your digestion? Of course not. It's something that is you know, evolutionary established. Mm -hmm. You don't control. It just happens, right? Mm -hmm. So, and digestion is also, it, it sends a message out. You need to eat. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and then it comes back. Right? So you need to eat. You're eating food right? mm -hmm. so the environment you choose what you eat mm -hmm. <laughs> changes the way you digest ah interesting of course same, of course. Model. same, same model. model same model same thing yeah 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 exactly the analogy is perfect because you just change the environment but what you're eating actually changes the way you're you're digesting everything so it's the same thing with the environment where you change that you change the way of thinking. You create more time. You, uh, it's. I love the. I love the analogy. I love the. So we need to make sure that we know this. So this book is by Doctor Paul. S S no, so it's Robert. It's Robert, Robert Sapolsky. Sapolsky. There right. you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robert so Sapolsky. basically, I, I no, I, I I had to put the diagram because I created this diagram in not even an hour before we had this conversation. So oh, fantastic. It's, digestion is automatic. That creates mm -hmm. hunger. Mm -hmm. Hunger, so we eat. What we eat, the food, changes our digestion. Yes. So this course. is the, the, the perfect circle. And so yes. this is the same thing as the body changes behavior, changes the mind, changes our environment, changes mm -hmm. the way we be, uh, changes how our biology reacts and changes our behavior again. And, and it's like this fantastic, fantastic circle of how the body and body over mind, that not is, mind over is. matter, body over mind and mind over matter, right? That is mind Because we are always thinking about mind over matter. No. I say no. Wrong. Wrong. There is also matter over mind. Many people have by stress. Stress changes the way you think. So mm -hmm. it is predominant in the way your mind functions. Wow. Right? Wow. So, wow. and or in, okay, I don't want to stigmatize, but women have their, you know, the monthly cycle. Mm -hmm. it, many women suffer from uh, emotional, uh, you know, changes, you know, and behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. It's not a psychological problem. Mm -hmm. It's the body's hormones that change Precisely. the way we behave. Precisely. So today's many, many, many of the mental health problems today are not psychological. They are biological. Wow. So wow. you can't change that, you know, that mental health in many people by, you know, by mind therapies. Yes, exactly. No, it has, it needs body work. Yes. And 
then when the when that is changed to change their environment and to change the way they function yes support it with mental health therapy interesting interesting tom you, i you are blowing my mind on so many aspects here right now but i love it because you are passionate about it and it feels like you just shared to us the breakthrough that you had this morning. Is it a part of that? What yeah. you thought of this morning? It's fascinating. It's, it, I feel the excitement, Tom. The audience and listeners just feel that excitement. To, to, to everyone, you know, before we recorded this, you talked about your breakthrough this morning. And thank you that I, I'm just glad to have you on here to talk about all of that. Tom, there is so much to unravel. I wish we had all the time in the world. I have so many more questions. But you shared such profound, profound, profound concepts today. And I'm truly, truly grateful for um, encountering these ideas and these concepts that you've come up with, that you've written. Tom, I'd love to give you this opportunity. First of all, where can we find your books? Very, very important. You know, also maybe drop the recommendation with doc, doc, Dr. Robert Sapolsky and all that. But also, where are you? Are you on any socials? Are you on LinkedIn? Yeah. I know you are on LinkedIn. Where yeah. are you most active in? Where can we find out more about Tom Myers? Uh, I, you know, LinkedIn is the best place. Uh, mm -hmm. Tom Myers at LinkedIn. And through you, probably, if people go to your profile or in the, in the list, you know, on the bottom of the, the comments or something like that from this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so, and futurizeyourself.com, that is the website mm -hmm. uh, for I the books it. and the theories around that. But if you want to know more about me, um, about my other uh, hats, uh, as we said in the beginning, uh, it's myerstom.com. Very easy. Myerstom. Tom.com. That's where everything is. Uh, where there's like a pager where everything is redirecting you to the right places. The reset approach, my carbon, my osteopathic practice, <laughs> and also my books and right, speaking speaking engagements. Yeah, I am checking that out right now. I'm literally on your website. I am looking at your book as well. I am definitely going to grab a copy of this. I would invite all our audience and listeners to do the same. If you enjoy the concept, I am, I am for sure am profoundly, you know, inspired and opened up with all the ideas that you've shared with us today, Tom. Um, and of course, all the insights and wisdom as well. So I invite everyone as well. Again, that's futurizeyourself.com and myerstom.com. The book is Futurize Yourself. Design your life on purpose. You can find it on Amazon and all. Uh, you know, it's also everywhere and everywhere else. Um, Ebook format also, no problem. Everywhere. Um, Dr. Tom, or I, just call, I keep calling you Dr. Tom. It feels like <laughs> doctor to me. I'm so, but Tom, thank you so much again for being here. Before I really, really, truly let you go, leave us one more thing, one more advice, a quick wisdom. You know, to wrap this all up nicely, take us home. Mind your body before your body reminds you. Oh, lovely. I love that. I love it. And I believe that is what you are writing just recently. That is the title as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's just a, a presentation sense. that I'm preparing. But I'm saying this already for more than 10 years. Ed, so, yeah, but it's, it. it's like some things you say and so much later you find that there is so much more depth to that phrase mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and i'm always amazed by you know the levels of depth of something that i said 10 years ago mm -hmm. that that you know it's today i had this real like wow you know i discovered another layer <laughs> wow that's fantastic I love and it. so you had the scoop you had the scoop of i this. have the latest <laughs> scoop i have the first scoop i have the first scoop yeah. today from dr tom himself and to all our audience and listeners the same thing you are getting the first scoop of this breakthrough by tom Tom, again, thank you so much for your time today. I thank would you, love Joshua. to um, have, you know, let's keep in touch, have more conversations about this. And again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And it was such a great conversation. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, to all our audience and listeners out there, I hope you enjoyed this. See you on the next one. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.